Hey, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop with a little bit of a bonus video. You might be looking and thinking, hey Mike, you covered Quirky Circuits yesterday, and you'd be right. But in the course of playing this game again for both the review and for my playthrough yesterday, I decided I wanted to make a solo variant for it, and I did. Now, I'm not claiming it's perfect, I'm not saying it's some work of utter majesty, but it pretty much leaves the rules unchanged, which is my favorite kind of variant. And in the playtests I've done with three of the robots with uh, various difficulty levels, I think it works pretty great. I'm going to post the full variant on BGG, but I'm going to walk you through it today. Now, I'm assuming that you at least checked out the review or play yesterday, so I'm not going to go into as much detail on how the game goes. But just for fun, I will show you a different robot. This is uh, considered the most basic one. It's the starting robot, which is a cat on a Roomba cleaning up dust. And unlike Lefty from yesterday, none of this robot named Gizmo's cards are for picking things up. All she does is move and turn. And just quickly run through the special things for her scenarios. Anytime she moves over one of these little dust bunnies, she gets rid of it. And her goal to win is to get rid of all the dust and return to her starting space, kind of like a good Roomba should. A few other rules, if she moves into a yellow border like this, she hits it, it's an obstacle, she doesn't move in. And her special rule is when she hits an obstacle, she rotates one space to the left. Additionally, we've got this lip going into the dining room. To get over that, she has to do a double or triple move. A single move won't cut it. If she moves into this obstacle where this vase is, she will break the vase onto the opposite spot. Or if she hits where there is no opposite spot, it just goes to the bottom. And that becomes something else she has to clean up. And finally, these little blue spaces, which are chairs, you need to move only one. If you do a double or triple move, you'll hit it like an obstacle, but if you move a single move, you'll just move into its space. And in case you're curious, here's her distribution of cards. She's got five move forward, one, two double move, one triple move, two reverse moves, one left turn, three right turns, and two 180 turns. So it might seem like lefty, she has this imbalance of turning, but actually for her yellow cards, there's three of them, the ones that you have to play. Uh, two of them are left turns, which balances it out, and the third one is a double move forward. All right, so with the preliminaries out of the way, let's talk about the variant. So what you're going to do is you're going to play like it's a two-player game. So you'll see I have two five-card hands dealt out, and one of them, my hand, is going to be face up. The other one, my partner's hand, is going to be face down. And I can play cards from either hand freely, but I have to follow the rules of the game. So I have to play yellow cards before I can play blue cards for my partner's hand. And both of us have to play at least one card in the programming line before we can end the turn. So basically it's just like the two-player game, except way more difficult because I don't know what half the cards do. So here's the one little bonus. I'm going to call this normal difficulty. After you've revealed the entire programming row, you can either get rid of one card in the row, or you can switch the positions of two cards in the row. Now for easy mode, you can do that more often. For very easy mode, you can even flip over one or two of the AI cards to see exactly what they are. And for insane difficulty, if you want to try that, you could cut out the extra maneuvering altogether and just deal with what your row gives you, but good luck winning at that point. So let's quickly demonstrate a game, see how this works, uh, how badly I might lose. So to kind of chart my preferred progress here, I'd love to get all the stuff in the kitchen, then uh, jump up there, avoid the vase, or knock it down to the north, because then I'm just going to clean it up anyway. And kind of do a sort of exterior uh, mode to get all the stuff, get back to home. So the AI's got two yellow cards, so I'm going to have to play at least one of them. And they're more likely to be left turns, but one of them could be a double forward. So here's a little trick I like. I want to make things as controlled as possible. So I'll move forward two, three, four. That'll get me all the way to the wall. And now if I play the AI's yellow, I'm going to turn left no matter what. Because if it's a left turn, I turn left. If I hit the wall, I turn left. And let's go ahead and do the second one. So I'll know for sure. Actually, I guess I won't know for sure because one of these could be, they could be in a different order. But I'll probably be facing that way. Potentially, I could be down here. And then most of the turns in this deck are to the right, so that should have me going forward again. And then <laughs> let's uh, stop there. I don't want to get too crazy here. All right, so now I reveal everything, maintaining its order. Okay, so that, okay, they were both turns, which is what I expected. That was the right turn. Okay, so that all worked out just as I hoped it would. So I go forward two, getting those dust bunnies. One and one turn left, a turn left, a turn right, and I get that guy. Not too bad for a first turn. 
Just like in the base game, you discard all of these. I'm going to refill our hands, face down for my partner, face up for me. Now, a big part of the strategy in this solo mode is that you can see what's in the discards. So, for example, three of the five move forward ones are gone, and both of the yellow turn lefts are gone, so I know for a fact that the AI's yellow there is the double forward. So let's see, I guess I have to use that because none of my cards are going to actually get me to this last dust bunny. So that'll move me forward and then turn me left. And then I have a left turn, but I also have a backwards movement, and they'll both do the same thing since I'll hit the wall and uh, turn it to face north again. Now he has a ton of straights and I have none, so I'm going to have to rely on the AI to help me out here. There's still a three movement forward, a two movement forward, and a backward movement in the mix. And hopefully one of them will get me over the lip. And again, I don't care if I hit the vase from this angle. So let's just make some random choices. Let's see, three of them. Now I'll have my manipulation of the AI to get me over the lip successfully. So let's assume that I hit the vase and then I'm going to do an about face to uh, face the way I want to be going. And you know what? That's too many turns. So actually, let's not do the about face. Let's do two right turns. I just want to kind of empty my hand out more. All right, so we knew about that. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, there's the triple. Is that in the right spot? So let's see. I'll go forward. I'll turn. I'll turn again. The triple will get me up, but then the rear will get me back down. Then I'll bounce off that. All right, so let's see. Remember in the variant, you can either discard one card from your program row or flip the position of two cards. I think I don't want this reversed. That's going to really mess up my plans. So I'll go forward, forward again, bump into the wall. Go backward, bump into the wall. Both turn me left. I'll go up three because it's more than a single movement. It will get me over the lip. I'll hit the vase, which will be clean when I get to that dust bunny. Turn left and double turn right. This is going great. Uh, pretty lucky draw here for our third turn. I like when I get things that give me exact information. So for example, if you look, there's only two about face turns and I have both of them. So with only a single left turn out there, any turns are very likely to be rights. And I love this. I got the yellow double forward, which means any other yellows that come out, I am 100% sure will be left turns. But once again, I have a ton of turns and my partner has all the straights, which leaves me in kind of a precarious situation. But yeah, I guess let's try to go up there and then turn to start going under the table. All right, so I'll do my uh, yellow that I got to play first. That'll move me forward to here. I have no other information on straights at this point, but I got to imagine that at least most of these are probably one movement. Wait, 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 do I have no information? These were the first two cards dealt, which means they were from the bottom of the deck. And I don't think I ever saw the other double straight. And I think I did see both reverses. So I think I'm actually pretty safe playing these, the older ones. I think it'll move me forward too and then turn me in the right direction. Now let's assume that's right. This is more likely to be a one forward. So that'll get me into the chair space, which again can only be when you move one. And I've got no more movement. So let's just, uh, oh, I have the only left. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, let's play a few varieties of these things just to draw more next turn. All right, double forward and single forward. Oh man, I called that exactly. That is awesome. Oh, reverse, darn it. So I'll move forward, that'll get me right there. And then I'll turn left. The reverse would turn me left again. Oh, and then I would turn uh, right, flip around, turn right. That's not bad, I guess. Or wait, what if I take out the 180 completely? Then I'd be to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. I'd be facing that with a left turn and left yellows coming in. I think I'm gonna discard that. Okay, so two moves forward, two more, get those. Move forward, hit the wall, move backward, hit the wall. Turn right, turn right, ready to uh, face left and get my stuff. All right, I got one yellow. The A, I didn't get any, but oh, they got all the straights again and I've got three is not gonna help me at all with all these uh, chairs around. So let's see the simple thing and get that. I think I'm 100% sure that those are all right. Yeah, because I have the only left and I had uh, both the 180s, so that's useful. Looking at the discard, I've seen uh, one of the two rear movements, one of the two double movements. I have the three in my hand, so I have pretty good chance that these are going to be ones. But let's see. Okay, I'll turn left. Let's get under that chair. And then uh, this will move us again to there. And then I got to basically rely on the AI because my three won't do anything in this just chair land over here. But I can flip them around. So one two, three. Uh, if those are all okay, it should get me there and then turn me. 
You know, let's just go four in, because with my ability to flip two of them, I'll probably be pretty safe. And then I guess I want to hang on to that, because if I get out of here, it'll be a perfect one for there. But here, let's uh, go ahead and do... I know that's a right, so actually I'm going to keep that. I'm happy with knowing what the AI has. All right, let's see what they have for us. Have a rear right off the bat, and I'm sure I'm going to like that. Then a double, no. Okay, then a straight. Another straight. So probably going to get rid of the double. Let's see. I'll turn left. I'll go there. I'll go back to here. And then if I get rid of the double, I'll go there and there. And then I'll turn to the left. That's decent. Okay, so let's get rid of that guy. So turn, one, back, one, one, turn. I did not accomplish much of anything on that turn. All right, before I shuffle the deck, I'm dealing the last two cards. I don't know exactly what that is. I haven't paying too much attention, but I do know this is a left turn. Going to the AI, so that's good to know. Ah, uh, but the AI got a second yellow, and I have no idea what that is. All right, so let's see. Let's have the AI play the left. And then I can play my about face. And then let's kind of rely on me for now. That'll get me to the first dust bunny. Turn left. Get to the second one. Let's hope this is a straight from the AI. That oh wait, crap, I can't do that because he's got this. Darn it. Uh, okay. Um, all right, we'll do that. Hope it's a left turn. Use the thing I know is a right turn from him. And then hope that gets us out of the table. Then play that. Jesus. Right, there's a lot here. Okay, left turn. We knew about that. Is this a left? Oh, it's a double forward. Although, wait, wait. No, no. I, I planned this better than I thought because uh, I should still be under the chairs, I think. Wait. Hmm, you know, I just checked the rules and it's only moving into one of the blue line spaces that requires the one movement. So I can come out of here really quickly. So let's see. I'm going to turn left, turn around, go straight, turn left, go there. And the double movement is actually fine. I'll turn right, I'll go forward, which will turn me left. And I'll go forward again and turn left. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Left, about face, one, left, one, double, right, hit and turn, boom. All right, I'm almost certainly not going to get a green result on this stage, but that's okay. Even in my real multiplayer games, I usually get yellow or red. Ooh, so nice thing, uh, the shuffling and dealing worked out perfectly so that the entire deck is out and the discard is available. So I won't go into excruciating detail, but this worked out pretty nicely. This turn has to be a right, and I think three of these are straight forwards and one of them is a double. That's the only lack of surety I have here. I've got all these goofy backwards moves. Let's see if I can make those work for me. So that'll turn me to face that way. Then I'll be facing away from the uh, dust and vase. And that'll get me onto them. And then if I do the right turn, I'm now facing the way I want to go. Gonna hope that's a one, although if it's not, I can probably switch it. Okay, right turn, so I should be facing this way. And then, I mean, geez, I don't know. These are all forward motion. That's what I need right now. Okay, it was a right turn. I was correct about that. Basic, that's good. Oh, basic, did I get this wrong? One, and, ah, the two came out last. So does any of this bother me? Turn left, turn left again, go backwards, turn right, go forward, go right. One, two, three, four. Ah, that kind of goes farther than I want to. Maybe I get rid of the double move and end up here. That might be a better look for me. Although I'm about to shuffle, which means all these backwards movements could get me, like, back into the dining room. So never mind, I'll just let it fall where it is. All right, so we're in the end game here. We've cleaned up everything. Remember, we need to get back to our starting space, but we don't have to be facing the same way we were at the beginning. And the AI's got a yellow that I know nothing about. It's more likely to be a left turn. Ooh, and actually where I am right now will automatically be a left turn because I would hit the wall. So heck yes, let's play that immediately. Get me facing the right way. And then let's see, I could like move forward two. There's a lot of turns on where the left turn is. Let's see, let's have some controlled stuff. So I'll move forward one. Double move will hit me here and then uh, face north. Ooh, actually, though, maybe I don't want to do that. What if I do this, save the one movement forward? That'll get me here facing east. Then I can make the assumption that probably almost all these turns are right, so I'd be turning south. Be backing up. Yeah, that would put me there. And then that would have me face north again. If this is also a right turn. That'll have me face east. I'll go straight. And then here, I can throw this turn in because if uh, one of these is the left turn, I can switch it with that last card and just to kind of spin in my spot. Perfect. 
Okay, so it was a left turn, but it doesn't matter. And then I'll move forward two. I'll turn to the right. Good, that's just what I wanted. Go backwards, flip around. Turn to the right, perfect. Go there. And, oh, none of them were the left turn. So just do a little victory stance right there. And I did get a yellow result, so not too bad. So there you go, my little unofficial solo variant for Quirky Circuits, if you like programming but don't want to deal with the chaos of other people messing up your plans. And depending on the scenario, hard mode is potentially feasible. You saw that I didn't actually discard or switch cards very often. I tended to end up with stuff I liked because I could see how the probabilities were going to play out. But play around with it yourself if you get the chance. Let me know what you think. And in any case, good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.